a horrible rainy day in Appleton? I can't believe it. I'm so shocked. Listen, Appletonians, we get rain so many times a week. Sunny, get out of the way. She wants to say hello again. She likes the rain. I'm back inside where I belong. <laughs> Today we're talking about how to romanticize rain because we see a lot of it here in Wisconsin and if you're gonna have to endure something often, you might as well figure out a way to enjoy it. So, without further ado, I have one, two, <laughs> three incredible songs that remind me of or that I like to listen to on rainy days. Number one, we have Backdoor by Grey Kids. The instrumental piece is what makes this song really remind me of rain in a pipe or in a gutter. Next, we have Jete la soleil du mort. Translation is something kind of akin to I Will Leave You Notes. This song just sounds so lovely and romantic and tragic all at once. Next, we have The Night We Met. This song I absolutely love. It definitely reminds me of Standing in the Rain. Hello, Appleton North. My name is Noah Tabber, and for this Teach It Tuesday, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to win in a street fight. Step number one, choose an opponent smaller than you. See the small chump over here? I have a humongous size advantage over her, which gives me a big advantage in this fight. She can really not do anything against me because I can do this and she can't hit me because her range is shorter than mine. Step two, fight dirty slash arm yourself. It's a lot easier to win in a fight when you have a weapon and your opponent doesn't. So if the other starts to lose the fight, pull out your handy dandy weapon and just start shooting. Step three, this is the most important step. Do you ever find yourself in a losing situation? Always run. Hello everyone. You might be wondering what that big long word is. Why there's a bunch of cards on the board. And if this shuffling is actually doing anything. We will find out the answer to most of those things on this penultimate episode of Word of the Week. Okay, first things first, do not ask me how to pronounce that word. I looked it up. I tried. It might be cartomancy. It might be cartomancy. No one knows. But what I do know is that it's the act of divination, of fortune telling, with playing cards. Now this is not the same as tarot cards. Tarot cards are their own separate deck with pictures and their own meanings. This is just with normal playing cards. Now, I'm not a cartomancy expert, though I am pretty good at shuffling. But, hey, I can still give you a little, a little taste. Four of hearts. Nine of spades. Ace of spades. You will ace your test on May 9th, and you will do it with all of your heart. Now, I'll address the elephant in the room. What is this word? It's very weird. It's not even in the dictionary. Well, I came across it in The Night Circus, favorite book of all time. Reading is the number one, the best way to learn new words, to expand your vocabulary. So, hey, I highly recommend reading The Night Circus, and then maybe you'll learn a little bit more about cartomancy. Welcome back to my series on the worst leaders in history. Today we're going to 1448 to talk about Vlad the Impaler, who wasn't one of the worst leaders in history, but rather one of the most feared, as he was a great military leader and won many battles against the Ottomans, but also loved to torture people. What he would love to do is invite some of his subjects or possibly political rivals to massive banquets and then torture and kill them all. His favorite method of murder would be impaling people where he would stick them each on a long wooden spike, where they could lay for possibly days without dying. By this method, he probably killed around 20,000 people. Although he would probably just be a minor historical footnote if it weren't for the Bram Stoker novel released in 1897, hundreds of years after his death, titled Dracula, which is based off Vlad the Impaler. We are here with uh, Mr. Hermanson, the most featured person on Feature Friday this year. So today we are asking the question, what is your favorite thing that, about this year? Like an overall positive recap of the year. Yeah. 
It's a great question, which I came up with that question. <laughs> so this. what's your answer? I think one of my big answers would be, I have two. Okay, answer number one was being on Feature Friday so often. I've enjoyed being oh on goodness. Feature Friday. Number two, I have a lot of kids in my class that are really funny. There's been a lot of jokes. Some of them have even been at my expense, but that's been a big win. Would you consider me one of your funniest students? Maybe we should cut the video right here. All right, so today we're here with... Mr. Mikesell. Okay, and then what is your highlight for the year? My highlight um, is uh, I had some terrific kids in both psychology and sociology and uh, made class of last this year. I was in your sociology class. You were. You yeah. Were, you were fantastic. Oh, my gosh. All right, North, we are here with... Uh, Mr. Edmonds. What are some of your like highlights from this school year? Uh, I would have to say... Uh, reading Romeo, Romeo and Juliet with my freshman uh, class, and then uh, meeting with uh, Mr. Ramponi. All right, so today we're here with my brother. This oh. is Nick. Hi. Highlights. It's gotta be taking my baby sister Ooh. to school. Oh my God. Every day. So. 